Okay, now we get into our second reading, which continues to read from Ephesians chapter 4. We continue to be on our collision course toward the most unfortunate um, connection, which is not a connection, actually, the most unfortunate um, collision between the second reading and the gospel uh, that's coming up the last Sunday of August. So we all have that to look forward to. What a gift. Okay, so anyway, so Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17, then we skip a few to verses 20 through 24. And I'll explain after the reading, I'll explain a couple of the verses that we skip over. So let's read it. Brothers and sisters, I declare and testify in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. That is not how you learned Christ, assuming that you have heard of him and were taught in him as truth is in Jesus, that you should put away the old self of your former way of life, corrupted through deceitful desires, and be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and put on the new self, created in God's way in righteousness and holiness of truth. Okay, really good. Now, I'll, I'll get to the verses that we skip, but let's just, let's, let's get this. It's a really fascinating thing that Paul gets at here, when he says, I declare and testify in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do. So, um, fascinating thing. Remember a couple of weeks ago when we started Ephesians, I talked about how the, the Christians in Ephesus were mostly non-Jewish. They were mostly Gentile converts. So when, when Paul says, like, I declare and I testify, you must no longer live as the Gentiles do, in a real way, he's writing about like, you lived this way. In fact, I suppose he says this, right? Is that, that you put away the old self of your former way of life. So you used to live like the Gentiles do, but now you Gentiles, you're not Gentiles any longer. This, this is the wild thing is that when we are baptized into Christ, we take on a new identity so that we're no longer who we are, but now we are, we are in Christ. We're, we're Jesus. Uh, we're, we're made members of the body of Christ. And so it's a very real thing that, that yes, the Christian life, it, it involves um, a, a, a new way of living, but more than that, it is more than just a new, like following a bunch of laws. Of course, that includes following the bunch of laws, but, but more than following a bunch of laws, it involves living a new identity so that I, I am to live as Christ because that's who I've been made to be. I'm the only way that I can call God my father is because I share in communion with Jesus. Because after all, the, the, the Holy Trinity, it is only three members, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It is not, like, I'm not a fourth member of the Trinity. No, the only way that I, I share in, like, God's fatherhood and I am his son is because I am in Christ. And so St. Paul says this, like, you can't live like they do because that's not who you are anymore. They're, they're, they're living, this is really fascinating, they are living in the futility of their minds. Oh man, that's, that's such a strong thing. You know, so many times we, we focus on what? We focus on our feelings in, in today's world, unfortunately. And it's not that our feelings are bad, but we tend to associate like, how's your relationship with Jesus? And, and I associate how I'm feeling about it with how my relationship is. And we do this with other relationships. How's your relationship with your spouse? Well, depending on how I'm feeling on any given day, that's how I'm gonna say my relationship is. As opposed to what Paul is talking about, the renewal of our minds. Actually, rather than relying exclusively on my feelings, wouldn't it, wouldn't it make more sense to lean into my mind, to lean into the truth of the matter that I'm a, like, for example, I might, I might have a, not have a good relationship with my spouse, but, but I know that, that he or she isn't, is, is being faithful to me and, and I'm being faithful to him or her. And, and we're, we're actually like pursuing a life of growth, of, of growth and holiness. And, and we might not have the warm, fuzzy feelings that we once had for each other, but that's okay. Like that's not necessary. It's helpful when they're there, of course, but it's not necessary. We can actually know that we both love each other, even though we don't have the warm, fuzzy feelings all the time. So too, in our relationship with God, if, if we're just relying on our feelings and the pursuit of pleasure, then what's going to happen? We're going to end up like the Israelites. We're going to end up like the Jewish people in, in the first reading in the gospel, which is to say that we're just going to be looking to satisfy our, our desires by ourselves, relying on our own understanding, our own circumstances, our own powers, our own whatever. We're going to be pursuing the Lord, maybe, but ultimately we're going to be pursuing him not with the right motivation. And so St. Paul says this, that they're, they're living according to the futility of their minds. And, and then from there is where we skip into, we skip over. It says they're, they're darkened in their understanding. They're alienated from the life of God because of their ignorance. 
Because of the hardness of their heart, they have become callous and have handed themselves over to licentiousness for the practice of every kind of impurity to excess. Licentiousness, this, this sense of like, I can do whatever I want. I, I give myself permission. Maybe other people can't do it, but I'm the exception to the rule. I, I give myself license to do this. So notice a lot of these things that Paul is talking about that we skip over, which is unfortunate that we skip over. I don't, I don't know why we do that. Probably don't want to offend people or something. But, but anyway, they're, they're darkened in their understanding. That's, that's something that takes place in the mind. They're alienated from the life of God because of their ignorance. That's something that takes place in the mind. Um, they become, uh, because of their hardness of heart, I suppose that's not in their mind, but, but ultimately, like, my, my, I, I can assent to Jesus. I can submit to him. Or I can refuse to submit to him so that my heart might be hardened, but, but that also is something that takes place in my mind. Do I really believe in him? Like what I was talking about in our last session with the gospel passage. Do I really believe in him? Even though I don't fully understand, maybe, maybe I even wrestle with it, but am I willing to surrender in my mind and in my heart? Right, so again, this, this takes place in, my, in my, my mind. They become callous and have handed themselves over to licentiousness licentiousness, this sense of like, I give myself permission. Again, that's, that's something that takes place. So like so much of this, you guys, it, it takes place in our minds. And so St. Paul, it makes sense that he's talking about the futility of their minds because they're not engaging their intellect when it comes to, to pursuing the truth of God. And so St. Paul says like, you, by the way, you didn't learn Christ in that way. This is not how you learned, assuming that you have heard of him and were taught in him as truth is in Jesus. Like how important is it? How important is it for us to be taught correctly and for us to teach correctly? All these, these, these things, they engage our intellect, they engage our mind. The Christian life is not, is not a mindless life. It is not a, a life that is, is all about butterflies and rainbows. No, it is a life that engages the mind. Some of the smartest people in history were Christians. And they, they, were, they were that, not turning off their intellect, but rather engaging in their intellect. Some of the greatest scientists in history, actually, were, were Catholics. Not shutting off their intellects, but engaging their intellects and seeing the incredible, like, expanse of the, the universe that God created. You know, like, what, what an incredible thing. The expanse of it, but also, like, all the way down to, like, the, the most microscopic things. So, anyway, so that's, that's just an important thing. So, so, anyway, so what? So, you've been taught that you should put away the old self of your former way of life. No longer. So, there is a, a, moral, a moral aspect here of, like, I can't live like I used to live, uh, which was corrupted through deceitful desires. How many times we have these, like these desires that just say, I, I won't be satisfied until I have this thing. I won't, my, like my body can't be comfortable until it's, until it's just in the right spot, in the right temperature. But then what happens so many times when we satisfy the desire, what happens? It causes a new kind of hunger or it leads us to really lack satisfaction. They're deceitful desires. So that's, that's the old way of life. But now be renewed in the spirit of your minds. Engage your intellect. How important it is for us like to have these Bible studies. And I know, I know that I've mentioned this before, but, but how important is it that we engage our intellect to actually like form our minds with the Word of God, to study the Word of God, to study what the church teaches for that matter, to, to let our minds... And, and for this matter, like I know people who maybe before they weren't studying much because they didn't know to, they didn't, they didn't know how to or whatever. But now in the last few years, they've maybe been engaging their intellect, studying the scriptures, studying what the church teaches. And now I hear people saying like, gosh, this, the Catholic life is so good. I, I've, I've never been happier to be Catholic in my life. You know, like that, that kind of a thing that when we actually engage our minds, there is something that happens by God's grace. There's something that happens that transforms us and renews us actually. So it allows us to put on a new self created in God's way in righteousness and holiness of truth. This is what we're all called to, to live righteous lives. Yes. So to live the moral life, but also just to live in holiness of truth. This, this like sense of like my mind, even I want that to be set apart for God's glory, for God's purposes. I don't want to, I don't want to bog it down with, with worldly things. And that's not to say that entertainment is bad, but, but it is like, is your mind a mind that is set apart for the truth? So that if you find entertainment that is not compatible with the truth, you're actually willing to set aside the entertainment rather than setting aside your call to holiness of truth. That's, oh man, that's, so that's what Paul is getting at. It's, it's obviously a big challenge, but, but yet the end result, like this is the thing, is the end result is lasting satisfaction as opposed to passing satisfaction. Ah, gosh, what a gift. 
this is this is so good. I love this Bible study. I know I say this every week, and I just do. I, I literally like. Uh, I, I texted my buddy after going through the Bible session or the Gospel session. I texted my buddy. I was like, Oh man, John is John six is so good. It is so good, and I just I love engaging this. It helps get my mind going. You know, sometimes I have insights. I mentioned this in the last session. I have insights even while I'm talking. I suppose it's because I'm an external processor, uh, and and so that's just a really helpful thing. So thank you actually for letting me do this. Um, and and I, I hope it's I hope it's great for you as well. I look forward to sharing this with you every single week. As always, feel free to invite other people into this incredible thing, um, just to to engage our intellect, engage our mind about the Word of God, to study the truths of what the Scriptures reveal. Okay, God bless you. Peace.